Like many young Australians, Airdrie Matner wanted to explore the world. But what happened to the 25-year-old primary school teacher in Seoul, Korea, should be a warning to every traveller. She thought the city was safe. She was wrong. Airdrie went out one night, her drink was spiked. She was abducted by one man, then handed over to two others who raped her. Awful and unimaginable. But what makes her ordeal even more distressing is that when she tried to get help, Korean police made her feel like the assault was all her own fault. Incredibly, stories like this are becoming increasingly common in South Korea and neighbouring Japan. But a very brave Airdrie Matna is making sure the perpetrators don't get away with it any longer. Soul in the springtime is bustling. But beneath the friendly facade is a side to this country that foreigners know nothing about. I struggled as much as I could. You were drugged, abducted, raped and robbed. Yes. Violated first by sickening attacks. I was much less terrified hanging naked from a fence than being inside that house. Then let down by the system that is meant to protect. We are treated like criminals. This is a shame for the country. This is not a safe country for women. And the foreign men who are taking advantage of these weak laws. If you didn't rape her, why did you offer her $50,000? I'm not answering any more questions. You guys need to go away. Twenty-five-year-old Airdrie Matna is a survivor, and hers is a cautionary tale. The Adelaide primary school teacher was living her dream of teaching English in Japan when she decided to holiday in nearby South Korea. It would be the biggest mistake of her life. How are you holding up? Um... Not... not well. Um, it just feels like I'm stuck in a never-ending nightmare. September 25th last year is a date etched in Airdrie's mind for all the wrong reasons. Alone in Seoul and keen to meet new people, she signed up for a pub crawl. Did you let someone buy you a drink that night? No, I'm really careful. Every drink that I drank that night was was bought by myself. I remember just, you know, trying to chat to some new people, mostly women, um, expats that were living here. I was having a great time with these new people, and that's one of the last things that I remember. Somehow, Airdrie's third drink of the night was spiked. From that point on, things get hazy. It was not a slow process. It was not a realisation that something felt strange. It was a blackout and being aware that I was in the back of a taxi being taken somewhere and being violently ill. Slipping in and out of consciousness, Airdrie realised she was with a man she'd never met and had no idea where he was taking her. She pleaded with the taxi driver to save her. I picked up my phone and I showed it to the taxi driver and I just kept saying, please, please take me here, please take me back to my hostel. I can't imagine how scared you must have been in that moment. Yeah, I was, I was terrified and I, I didn't know what else I could do other than just beg with the man to, to take me back to the hostel. And he didn't? No. Instead, the man brought her here, a place locals call Hooker's Hill, in the seedy back streets of Seoul. Why do you want to come back here? I guess, you know, to, to confirm what I remember. Um, you know, there are so many pieces, memories, you know, I guess confirming for myself my memories of, of, of where this happened. In here? This is the hotel. Yeah. The view. 
You know what, I wasn't expecting this. And you have no memory of being brought here? No. No, I don't. Nothing between the taxi and, and being in the room. Mm -hmm. What's now apparent from the hotel's security footage is that at least three men were involved. The one with Airdrie in the taxi and two others. It shows the two men coming up to rent the room. I'm not with them. It shows them leaving again. It shows them returning with me and one of them taking me into the room. Him leaving about an hour or so after and then the next man going in and then him leaving. Do you remember anything that happened inside that hotel room? Yes. I was completely naked on my back on the bed and the man was on top of me trying to force himself inside me. You have a clear memory of that? Yes. And I struggled as much as I could. I tried to push him off. And I just wasn't strong enough. Airdrie woke up alone, naked, with her money gone. You're really confronting all of this right now, aren't you? Yeah. By being here. Yeah. Yeah. Deep breath. Do you want to get out of here? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. Little did Edrie realise, but her ordeal was just beginning. She would suffer again, but this time at the hands of police. Like many other rape victims in South Korea, she felt officers blamed her for what happened. Why did you drink alcohol, they asked. What were you wearing? And why were you out alone? For Airdrie, it was like being violated all over again. And it would soon get worse when, despite strong leads and DNA evidence, police decided to close the case. Just dumbfounded, shocked and dumbfounded. I just didn't understand it. You know, I felt that they had abandoned me. Is rape an easy crime to get away with here? Definitely. And why is that? Um, I think the authority, the police or the court, they don't think it's, it's a serious issue. Dr. Won Yun Lee treats sexual assault victims in South Korea. She says a blind eye is often turned to such crimes because of her country's subservient view of women. Rarely are men jailed for rape. And the number of sex crimes against foreigners has tripled in recent years. Is there a culture of sexual aggression and violence towards women here? Lots, lots and lots. I would say it's almost a social norm. See, I don't think that that is the image most people have of Korea, that it's not safe for women. I don't think many foreigners who are traveling here will notice that they might be exposed to the risks of rape, and not just rape, gang rape, drug rape. The decision by police to close Airdrie's case left her shattered. Good to finally meet you. I know. But she's not Aww. alone. How are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. Yeah, cool. <laughs> getting there. Today, she's meeting Amanda Wilson. The 35-year-old American is a teacher in South Korea. The Korean prosecutor let me down. Mm. Severely let me down. She was allegedly assaulted in April last year and, like Airdrie, was dismissed by authorities. Has your alleged rapist been brought to justice? Not at all. He has not spent one day in jail. 
And that's because... I think there's no doubt that they just wanted this to go away. Unlike Airdrie, Amanda does remember meeting the person she says attacked her. She'd been playing pool at her local bar with US military contractor James Hillier when he invited her home to a house party. Who was there when you got back to his place? No one. No one. And he looked at me and just said, You're, you won't leave, you won't be leaving. Amanda says what followed was a violent struggle. He was on top of me, so I was reaching up with all of my body to bite his face, and I got him, um, and he reeled back off of me and said, you bitch, you bit my face, you bitch. And I got up and just ran. Wearing nothing but her bra, Amanda tried to jump Hillier's front fence. She failed, impaling her wrist. Put my foot up here, jumped over, and when I came down, it came down like that. So I was hung like this, um, just enough, just enough that I could touch, um, and waving like this continuously with all of these cars coming, which they are right now. And no one stopped. Nobody stopped. So many people, so many people drove by, and nobody stopped. Were you screaming? Yeah, screaming bloody murder because my hand was literally impaled right there. An hour passed before someone stopped to help. I've just looked at seeing that scar on your hand. Look at that. You've got this reminder. Every day, every yeah. day I have a reminder. This is 50-year-old James Hillier today. He lives with his elderly mother in Waterford, California. In the weeks after the assault, he wrote this letter to Amanda, offering her $50,000 and pleading with her to drop the case, saying, neither one of us deserves to have our lives ruined by this. She refused the money, but to her disgust, Korean prosecutors decided not to pursue him. Is there a view here that foreign women who go out dancing and drinking, bring it on themselves? There is a word calling these types of women, which is like a white horse. This is a very, very bad word, uh, calling them as a sexual object. If the women agree to drink, it's agreeing to sex. He was allowed to go back to America and yeah. forget this had ever happened. Yeah, he had no repercussions whatsoever. And what message does it send when a case like yours, with some pretty strong evidence, is dropped? It scares the hell out of me. Because I worry that somebody else is going to hear about my story and choose because I, because mine didn't get prosecuted. I worry that if somebody hears about my story, and sees that mine didn't get prosecuted, that theirs might not be prosecuted. So what's the use that they should bring it up? And that scares me. That's why you're doing this. That's why I'm hoping that something will change. Coming up, confronting the man who ran away. He has not spent one day in jail. Alison Langdon from 60 Minutes Australia. Paying the price for speaking out. I believe they did it to scare me off. Did it work? No. And stronger together, the brave women fighting for change. I feel scared, I feel sick, but I guess I'm, I'm doing it anyway. That's next on 60 Minutes.